So you've decided to get into 3D modeling, and you're not sure where to start. As someone just getting into it, you're probably not wanting to spend any money, and you want to make sure you can do a wide range of things. That's where this fantastic program called Blender comes in. It's free and open source, which means it fits any budget, and it's likely to have a lot of community-made stuff for it already. It doesn't matter if you want to go into 3D modeling for video games, 3D printing, or animations. Blender supports all of that and quite well, even right out of the box. The first and most obvious way to get Blender is from the website itself, blender.org. While this isn't the best method to get it, it is the most obvious. The downside to it is that it doesn't update automatically, and you'll have to come back every once in a while to make sure it's up to date so you have the latest working software, and you don't have to deal with all the bugs from previous versions. To get it, you just go to blender.org, and then they have this blue download button. You go ahead and you click on that, and it'll take you to this new page. All you have to do is click download Blender, and then it'll go ahead to this next page, say it's downloading, and it should come up with a prompt asking you to download it. You just go ahead and click save file, and you're pretty much done there. Now, while that's a fantastic option, you do have to manually update it. There is an even better option, and that's to get it through Steam. When you get Blender through Steam, you get the benefit of the program automatically updating to make sure you have the latest version. Most of the time, this is absolutely fine. Sometimes it could break some of your plugins, but it's been very rare for it to actually happen. To get it, you just go to Steam and you go to the store. Go to the search bar, type in Blender, and then it should usually come up here and be the first option. You just click it there, and then you should have like a download button somewhere around here. I already have it installed, so it shows this Use Now button. Your download button might be in the same area. Then once it's done downloading, what you need to do is you go to your library. You might not immediately see it on your list of stuff here. So what you have to do is you go to this little search bar here and where it says games. And then you can go to where it says installed. And it should show everything that you have installed through Steam on this list. And here you can see Blender right there. Now that I covered the two most straightforward ways of installing Blender, we're going to go ahead and launch it and give it a look-see. So the two ways you can launch Blender the easiest is the most obvious. Come into this list, click Blender, click Launch. Your other option is to go down to the toolbar at the bottom right, right click your Steam icon, and then click on Blender. It might not show up there initially until you've at least launched it once. Or if you have a whole bunch of games that you go through, it might not be on that list on the toolbar as that list is the most recently used programs you've actually opened. So if it's been a little while, it won't be on that list. Now this is what we're greeted with. It's a simple splash screen surrounded by a whole bunch of buttons and numbers and all kinds of other stuff. For now, let's just go ahead and look at the splash screen. Here you can see a whole bunch of links that are pointing to a whole bunch of useful things. If you're really happy with the program, feel free to donate as donations are actually what keep the program being updated and supported by the community and allowing us to actually download it. You can see credits of people that worked on it, what the current version is like, if you need a manual, the actual Blender website, and the Python API reference. Python is a programming language that is primarily used in Blender for making plugins. There's a very handy plugin that I'll be talking about in another video. Additionally, here you can see that there is a recent list of blend files that I've opened. Yours will probably be blank. You could also see this button called Recover Last Session. That could actually be really handy. I've actually used it a few times. If you're using Blender and then it just randomly crashes and you haven't saved in a while, there's a chance you might be able to click on the recover last session and get back what you had and then make sure you save it after that. From here, what we're going to do is we're just going to click off the splash screen and see what we have to work with. Now, before we go any further, I want to make it clear that I'm not doing Blender tutorials. I'm going to assume you're at least somewhat familiar with Blender moving on. 
Some of the latest videos can cover some Blender aspects, but for the most part, they will be geared towards game modding, 3D printing, and or animation. The reason I'm not doing Blender specific tutorials is that there is already a ton of fantastic tutorials out there. And I'd like to do stuff about things that aren't already available or at least well documented. A primary example being modding for the game Space Engineers. Below there will be a link to a fantastic YouTube channel called Born CG that has a ton of great Blender tutorial videos and continues to do more. Whenever I ran into something I didn't understand, he usually had a video specifically for what I was looking for. If you find his videos insufficient, there's plenty of others for you to check out. Just Google Blender tutorial and the specific thing you're looking for and you should be golden. I do apologize for this, especially if you prefer my method of doing educational content, but it would take me forever to get to the stuff that's presently being requested of me due to the sheer amount of stuff crammed into any 3D modeling program. So please, if you have any troubles following along with something that is specific to Blender, please check to see if there's a tutorial for it already. There's some aspects I will cover personally, such as UV maps, empties, and textures. But if you're just trying to get a hang of Blender, these aren't the tutorials that you're looking for. So here we are now in Blender proper. Here you can see some things that are on the screen, like this camera over here, the box, and a light source. The first thing we're going to do is actually maximize the window. So top right, maximize. And what I like to do when I first start Blender is set up some small things that make it a little bit easier to deal with when I'm first booting it up. First thing I do is I delete these objects. I just go ahead and select them, delete them. The next one is I don't use the timeline very often. I find myself using the UV image editor. So what I'm going to do is go to the bottom left, click this clock icon, and then go up to UV image editor. Additionally, I like changing the pivot point and the way snapping works. So I'm going to go down here to this bar, change the pivot point to 3D cursor, over to the right, click the magnet, click on where the increment is, change it to vertex, and then change closest to active. Additionally, I change it from the blender render to cycles because that's what I end up doing most of my work in. So now it's changed to cycles. And from here, this is a very good baseline for a startup file. So go ahead and go to file and save startup file. Next, I like changing the theme because I find the default theme to not be very pleasing, especially after using it for a very long time. There is a theme that I always suggest people use because it's easy on the eyes and it helps make some stuff easier to read and it's just overall more pleasant. So we're gonna go ahead and get that first. So we're going to go back to our browser, go to Google, and you're going to type in Blender Theme Energy. And it's not usually the first option, it's actually a lower option. And the way you know you're finding the right one is you're looking for a WordPress website. And you just go ahead and click on it. And it should take you to this website here. You can see it says Blender Theme Energy. And this is what the theme will actually look like. This theme has actually been updated a lot. I was using it for several years now. And from my experience of trying different themes, this one has been the most pleasing. The individual that's worked on it has put a ton of time into it. And I've actually re read some of his explanation on his decisions for setting it up how it is. But we're just going to go ahead and install it instead of reading that stuff. I can look for a link and provide that in the description below if you guys want. Just let me know in the comments below and I'll go ahead and get that. So here's our image. We're going to go down to where it says 4 Blender 2.78C. This might change in time. Uh, it has a lot but it's probably going to be the same spot. I think the site overall design has changed a little bit as well. So just keep that in mind when you come here. As long as it says Blender Theme Energy, you get the image, then you have a download link for the latest version of Blender. 
you should be able to get it just fine. Go ahead and click on the hyperlink. It'll take us to a drop drop box area, and it's actually an XML file. But we don't want to go ahead and copy this. We just want to go ahead and download it. Go over here to download, click direct download, and then it'll automatically download it. So now that it's downloaded, we don't actually want to open the file. We want to just go straight back to Blender, and we want to go to File, User Preferences, and then the Themes tab. And then we can go ahead and we'll just maximize this window to make it a little bit easier. At the bottom left, you should see Install Theme. Go ahead and click on that, and then go to where the XML file downloaded. For me, it's under my storage drive and inside downloads. I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that. And as you can see, it changes the theme automatically. There's a couple other things that I suggest doing. The first one, going to the editing tab. And here you can see the steps for undo. I suggest just maxing this out, assuming you have the memory for it. Most people do, so you can just max it out and you should be fine. And one last thing, you can go to the add-ons tab and see a whole bunch of options here for you that are available naturally when you download Blender. I suggest looking through them and see if any catch your eye. I disable a few of them and leave a lot of them enabled because I actually end up using them. There's things such as the import export and this more or less supports a whole bunch of different formats. Like you can import directly the 3DS format which comes from Autodesk programs. You can import export the FBX. This is a very important one if you're actually doing video game modding, so make sure to keep that one in mind. Another important one is the STL format. If you're doing 3D printing, I actually ended up using the STL format quite a lot. There's a few others I used, but STL was one of the primary ones. The other one was the Wavefront OBJ format. There's a lot of other 3D modeling programs out there that can natively export to the OBJ format. So you shouldn't have to worry about too much going from one program to another, as long as it supports OBJ. All right, so now that we've changed some things around, we're just gonna go ahead and go to the bottom left and click on save user settings. So now that our settings are saved, we can go ahead to the top right and close that window and it should take us back here. Just in case, we're gonna go back to file, save startup file, and make sure we click this okay and we should be set up to use Blender. That wraps up the quick intro to Blender. As always, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to send me a message and I'll usually get back to you fairly quick. If you like these tutorial videos and you'd like to see more, or you'd like to see other videos that I might make in the future more frequently, be sure to check out my Patreon. As a thanks for helping me out, I try to keep my patrons updated as to what's going on and try to provide support to any that need it. That's all for now. Take care.